So hi, you've probably heard about this issue one floating around. Each side says the other one wants to gerrymander. What's actually going on? One of the things I've learned is if you want to get to the bottom of an issue, don't just understand the talking points for your own side. That's what most politicians usually get. But get to the bottom of what's actually going on, understand the best arguments for the other side, and then arrive at your own conclusion. That's what I did when approaching this issue. And here's actually what's going on with the essence of issue number one. It comes down to two questions. Number one is, how do you want the districts drawn in terms of what principles should be used in determining how election districts are set in Ohio? And number two, more importantly, who should be the party actually making those decisions? So let me explain to you exactly how this works, starting with the latter of those questions. Right now, the status quo is there's a body of seven people who decide how the districts in Ohio are drawn. That includes two Republicans and two Democrats from the legislature, that's four. And then there's three more who are elected representatives in statewide elections. That's the governor, the state auditor, and the secretary of state. The reason that makes sense is that those three, presume the Republicans and Democrats split their votes, those three decide who actually has the majority in answering how the districts are drawn. Those three people are elected in statewide elections that are not affected by the way the district lines are drawn. District lines only apply to congressional districts and other kinds of elections like state legislators. But for statewide elections, the numbers don't matter for how the districts are drawn because it's the overall state election anyway. That's a pretty fair way to settle it. It makes sense that the majority is going to be decided. The majority of that seven-person body right now, four plus three, the majority is decided by statewide elected officials. That's the status quo today. Here's what they want to change it to. If you vote yes on issue one, which I am dead set against, but if you vote yes on issue one, what that does is it says it's no longer the elected representatives, the seven people, including the three statewide elected officials who said it. It's not elected representatives at all. It's going to be a body of unelected bureaucrats who cannot be removed from their positions by the voters at all. In fact, that's the point of it. So the entire point is to say, we don't want the voters to have a say in how these district lines are drawn. We want it to be done by a member of bureaucrats, by a committee of bureaucrats that cannot even be removed by the voter. Well, you might ask, what if this bureaucrat does a terrible thing, like commit a felony? Could they then be removed by the voters? The answer is no. The only people who can remove the bureaucrats from the committee are the other members of that bureaucracy, the other bureaucrats. You can't make this stuff up in some sense, but that's exactly what's happening if you vote yes on issue one. And then it gets worse than that. Not only can you not vote out those elected bureaucrats, you also can't even talk to any one of them about redistricting. If you do, they will report you to the government like you're some kind of unlawful transgressor. So this is, I think, the rather extreme parts of the way this issue one has been set up. A, they can't be voted out. B, they can't even be talked to by ordinary citizens. So how could this possibly pass? Well, it turns out Ohio has a history of putting up these ballot measures. They generally have failed. But what's different in this particular case is the funding. The w largest individual funder of this is a Swiss billionaire who is a citizen of a different nation. He couldn't fund individual campaigns for, for candidates, for elected office. But because the rules are a little bit more lax on money flowing in for issue-based ballot measures, it's like five plus million dollars from some Swiss billionaire who's a citizen of a different country is the one that's somehow investing the most money in how Ohio's own districting process is done. Does that make any sense? Well, it's a broader agenda at work. This is the Great Reset. The Great Reset has now established a toehold in Ohio where they don't want the people to be able to self-govern. They want expert bureaucrats of deciding how our districts are set rather than have it be settled at the ballot box by statewide officials. So that's what's really at issue here. People will find it very confusing. There's also a separate issue about which principle is supposed to be used. I consider that to be actually, frankly, the less important issue. On one vision, it should be based on proportionality. I don't love that model because it requires assessing who is a Republican or a Democrat or an independent, where what we're seeing in this country is a great realignment in what it means to be a Democrat versus Republican versus independent anyway. Just look at the presidential level versus a separate principle of contiguous districts to say that you want people to generally live in contiguous areas in the same district so your next door neighbor doesn't have a different congressman or a different Ohio representative than you do when your interests are more common. But that's a separate issue, also an issue in issue number one. I would still recommend voting no on that basis alone, but I wouldn't be spending enough of my time and energy like I am right now on this issue 
Because what really matters is who makes those decisions. Should it be those who are elected by the people democratically? I believe the answer to that question is yes. If you want it to be a committee of unelected bureaucrats who are removed from democratic accountability, and who, if you talk to them, you'd even be reported to the government, that's what a yes vote on issue one is going to get you. And that's why I'm encouraging everybody in the state of Ohio to protect Ohio, not just to keep Ohio red. That's the least of it. But most importantly, to preserve the constitutional principles of self-governance in Ohio, vote no on issue one, and you're going to help save our state.